Welcome to the Empowered Podcast, episode number 67. I'm your host, Ellery Wells, and today I have a little, tiny, short expression of my feelings about all of the passion that has been going on around sports lately. In January, when this is being recorded, we had the very first college football final game and some big, big news there. The Dallas Cowboys, they got kicked out of the playoffs. And I want to talk about just some of the passion that people are are throwing around around these sports teams. And I know this isn't a sports podcast. You know that by now. But I have an interesting take, and I'd love to get your feedback on that. Then I want to talk about no more excuses. But before we get into that, I have to apologize. Because over the past couple weeks, I've had some issues with my podcast Uh, Each episode going into iTunes and Stitcher. I don't know what happened, but some episodes got out of order. Some episodes weren't showing up in iTunes. You could listen to them on the page, but they wouldn't download to your phone or they wouldn't stream to your Stitcher app. So I want to apologize for that. I think I have it all fixed out. I, I, I looked in iTunes. I looked in Stitcher just... Uh, yesterday, I think it was, and you see 65, 64, 63, all in order. They're all playing, and you should be good to go, but I wanted to apologize for that. Just, by the way, if you go to empoweredpodcast.com, right there at the top of your page, there's a way to subscribe, and if you get, well, you can subscribe in iTunes, you can subscribe in in, uh, Stitcher, or you can subscribe, and I'll email you, a link to every single new episode. So if you had an issue, I apologize. But if you did have that issue, maybe this is a perfect time for you to sign up to receive emails about every new episode. I'll send you all kinds of free stuff, too. Uh, I'll send you great information, tools, tips, resources, all those things uh, to make your life easier, especially if you are an online marketer or trying to do an online business. My email list is going to be just absolutely incredible for you because I take all of the information that I get from hours. Well, at this point, it's it's no longer hours. I can no longer say hours. It's months, if not years worth of research, and I distill it, find the best, and send you via email some of those best resources. So if you go to empoweredpodcast.com, you will see a place to subscribe, Stitcher, iTunes, RSS, or put your email in there. I don't share that with anybody. So let's go right into the episode today. So as I mentioned before, I we just had... Two days ago, if you're listening to this on on the day it releases, two days ago, Monday, Oregon lost to Ohio State. The day before that, the Cowboys lost to some other team. I don't even know who it was because I don't care. But here's why this is important to me. This is why it gets on my nerves when people get so obsessed with, with sports, whether it's football, basketball, and I love my Baylor football team. But come on, if you here's here's my my passion for this. Now, hopefully, well, you know this maybe maybe this is the time where where you get a little offended or, or a little bit shaken up if you are a super mega sports fan. If people spent one percent, just just one percent, one tenth of ten percent, one percent of their passion for their sports team. If they redirected one percent of that to their own success, you and I could change the world. Those people, if that's you, you could do amazing, incredible things. If you would take one percent of the the passion, the the tweeting, the Facebook posting, the arguing, the knowledge that you have about these teams, the time you spend doing research, if you took 1% of that and directed it to getting yourself further in life, I would I would bet we would be absolutely amazed to see what you could come up with. Now, I'm guilty of this too. I sat down and I watched the first half of the the Oregon uh, Ohio State game and then I went and played video games. So <laughs> I, I'm not completely guilt-free about this as uh, at all. But 
I'm sitting here thinking, I'm scrolling through the Facebook pay, uh, my Facebook feed, and I'm seeing, that's a crazy call. Here's the rules. You know, when they're talking about a, a catch or not catch that one of the Cowboys players made. And then I saw a couple days later, yeah, I've slept on it, but this loss really hurts. Seriously? When was the last time you got this worked up over anything other than a sports team who doesn't even know your name? Now, I apologize. I Well, maybe I apologize. Maybe I don't. For this kind of coming off maybe as, as this rant, as this anti-sports, anti-passion thing, because I, I don't want to offend anybody, but I see these things. People who are are bloggers, podcasters, creators, people who have these entrepreneur visions, people who want to create something, you know, make a la- uh, lasting legacy for their for their family. And then every every time it comes up, they say, well, they start just blasting Facebook with their their love and their hatred towards re- uh, referees and their their love towards these football teams. Just my challenge to you, here we are at the beginning of 2015, or, or whenever you're listening to this maybe down the line in the future. My my request, my wish, my hope for you as you, as you plan out your next 30 days, or maybe it's even the next three years, as, as you're looking at your calendar, try to try to find some time to redirect that passion to something that will get you further in life. Whether it is the online business, whether it's a, a, a career change, a promotion, a raise, or a job change, whatever it is, maybe it's being more passionate about spending time with your family. Whatever it is, pencil that in. Don't pencil it. Make it right in pen, permanent marker. Put that stuff down on your calendar and take back some of that passion that you're just throwing out the window for stuff that really doesn't matter. And put it towards something that does. The second thing that I want to talk to you about today. So that was the first one. My little rant on on where we are directing our passions and, and those kinds of things. My second thing that has been weighing on my mind the last couple weeks is stop with the excuses. And I need to tell myself this too. This isn't me saying, you know, from this place of I, I've mastered and conquered my excuses and they don't come up anymore and and I don't have them anymore. This is coming from the trenches along with you where I have excuses. I get tired. I don't want to wake up in the morning. It's been cold and I don't want to get up and go outside. Or I just want to stay in bed. Or right now you might be able to tell that, that my my nose is congested. I feel like I've been congested for three months. And what kind of excuse can I tie back to not being able to breathe? I'm actually having uh, having to pause the podcast so I can take deep breaths because I can't breathe through my nose and I'm talking so I'm not being <laughs> I'm not able to breathe I'm cutting out all of the all of the blank spots but you know what we have we all have excuses and I want to talk to you about about eliminating those today and give you a few examples that that I have found in my life none of them are me so you don't have to worry about I'm going to I'm going to say something about myself but a musician a writer a photographer some kids a teacher and the difference between making it happen and making it not happen so we're going to go right into those and also I I don't always do this but if you are listening to this and you're also a blog post reader i'm i'm putting this as a blog post as well this part about no more excuses so uh this is something again that's been on my mind lately so let's go right in this i'm going to talk about tough love I, i hate tough love because it calls us on or calls me on my crap I said the other word on my on the uh, blog, but here I'll say crap in case kids are in the car. Because tough love forces us, forces me, to pay attention to that voice that's in the back of our head that's been nagging at us for for months or weeks, telling us what we need to do differently, telling us what we need to change, get up earlier, exercise more, eat healthier. This tough love tells us what we need to change. But tough love is one of the best kinds of love. Odd that 
something's tough can be one of the best, but tough love comes from a place of caring and hope. And it's a result of a friend or a family member, or maybe it comes from listening to, maybe it's this podcast that services this tough love for you, or the blog or blog post that you're reading. But tough love comes from a place of caring and hope, and it's usually the result of a friend or a family member who has the guts to stand up and tell us that we need to change. How often do we do we jump down the throats of someone who who calls us on our crap? A guy, a guy that's in one of my mastermind groups, um, he called me uh, just yesterday, and he's like, I need a break, I need a break. I want to do things with my life, but I need a break. I was like, what do you need a break from? And I wanted to give him some tough love. It's, sometimes it's a, a slap upside the head. What? What do you need to break from following your passion? You don't take breaks from those things. You go at it. You jump in with both feet and it energizes you. But anyway, that's how I see tough love. And it's the result of someone else, someone close to us, coming to us and helping us to realize the goals that we have set for ourselves. If we didn't have goals, we couldn't have tough love. If we didn't have someone care from for us, we couldn't have tough love strangers and people who have no no desire to help us get somewhere in life they will never give us tough love i hate tough love but i love tough love and i need it too so one of the things that are on our to-do list is my image if you head over to the blog on on wednesday january the um the 14th, you will see a to-do list, and the first thing, or the only thing on that list is stop making excuses. So we talked about tough love, but here's some excuses. Over the past few weeks, again, just like I mentioned, I've had this idea rolling around in my head. And whenever I have ideas that I can't I can't shake, or if it comes back up in, in conversation, or just going out through my day, I know it's something that needs to be said, whether it's, it's to me, to... The audience, the readers, if it if I can't shake it, I know it needs to be said. And I wondered, can I do a podcast like this where it's just me talking about not making excuses? And can I say to you as as someone listening right now, can I can I talk about this issue and can I say what I think needs to be said? And maybe it's what I need to hear. Can I say that? Have I built this platform? But I'm going for it because if I didn't, I would be letting excuses stop me from making it happen. As with any blog post or podcast episode that's been on my mind, like I said, uh, I believe this one needs to be said. So no more excuses. You have no more excuses. None. And neither do I. You and I have no reason whatsoever to not pursue what we want to pursue. Now that thought you just had right there. The one that just flashed into your mind, even if it was for only just part of a second, that's what you need to pursue. We have no reason to not see our dreams turned into reality in 2015, 2016, 2017, whenever you're listening to this. And there, there's no more excuses because the limitations that we had yesterday are no longer holding us back. The obstacles like like access to fans or the resources to make it happen are no longer in our way. For example, I've I through this podcast, through the power of the internet, I've talked to people in Australia, literally on the other side of the world. I've made friends all across the country who I've never met in person, but talk with on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. Through the this internet of being connected with people, you and I have access to things that we have never before had access to. And now I know I know we've had the internet for a few years. Actually, I think the internet was it did it did it hit twenty five? No, that doesn't sound right. Maybe it was America Online that hit twenty five years old in the last month or so. But it's it the internet's been around, but no. No time before in history have we ever had this much access to one another and the freedom to take our talents, our gifts, our, our, our passions, and put them in front of the people who need to hear them. If Harry Potter was first brought to life on a coffee shop napkin, surely, 
surely you and I can create our stories with our keyboards. Or we can we can share a message with a microphone. Or we can record ourselves cooking or whatever it is and put that on, on YouTube. If if J.K. Rowling can create a, a world, the world of Harry Potter and Hogwarts and all that stuff on a napkin. Surely we, you and I can do it with a keyboard. So let me give you a couple examples. And if you want the links that I'm about to mention, you'll have to go to empoweredpodcast.com slash six, seven. Because again, this is episode number 67. You have to go to empoweredpodcast.com slash 67 to get the links that I'm about to mention to you. But the links are to cool videos and stuff like that. So you're going to want to do that anyway. So the first example is the musician. And there's a link to an absolutely beautiful song called Scarborough Fair by a guy named Paul Cardall. If you've been listening to the show for any amount of time, I interviewed Paul. I had a kind of a fan moment. But if you go to empoweredpodcast.com slash 22, you will get to hear the interview that I had with Piano Master. He's won some awards with Paul Cardall. Highly encourage that. But there's a video uh, that I linked to in the show notes of this episode where he is playing a Steinway piano in an abandoned warehouse. There's a lot of artistic elements to it. It's a beautiful video. It's one of my favorite songs of his. But if you are a musician, like I know a lot of you are, because musicians are creative and you've told me and shared some of the things that you do. If you're a musician, you can do the exact same thing and record it with your phone or some of the gear that I mentioned a few months ago. You can do the exact same thing. It's amazing how much power is in a cell phone today. I was looking at the Galaxy Note 4. I think I'm going to get the Note 5 when I was walking around Best Buy just a few hours ago. And they were talking about the uh, the cool new wide-angle selfie camera. It's a front, uh, front-facing camera and all that you can do with it. You know, there's more technology in our smartphones today than I think powered the first space shuttles, which is absolutely insane. So if you have a cell phone, you have... You know, you can shoot high definition camera uh, uh, videos. You can shoot high definition videos, front facing camera or back facing camera, and it just eliminates any excuse that we can come up with for not creating video to upload to YouTube. And so Paul's got this amazing video of you t- on YouTube where he's playing the Scarborough Fair in this warehouse. But I'm going to tell you, you don't need a $30,000 Steinway piano to do this. You don't need this fancy, chic, hipster, uh, abandoned warehouse and a video crew. Sure, it would help, but all you need to do is just remove the excuses and make the music that people want to hear from you. That's what I want to challenge you with. Make the music that you're called to make make the music that that you want to make eliminate any excuses that are telling you you can't do it or you don't have the right equipment or the 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 lighting's not perfect or the sound won't quite be perfect get it out there and share it with somebody because if it's good people will share it if it's great people are going to want even more Let me give you another example, and this one's a friend of mine, Jimmy Burgess. By the way, Jimmy helped me get my my podcasting ebook, How to Start Your Professional Podcast, for two hundred dollars or less. He helped me get that to number one Amazon bestseller. But he also wrote a book, and it's sitting right behind me. And if we were doing video, you'd be able to see it. But Jimmy wrote a book called What Just Happened: How to Bounce Back in Life, so you can do more, have more, and be more. And he did not have a traditional publisher, and neither did I for my book, for that matter. His book, you can buy it on the shelves, and you can, you know, it's a physical book. Mine's an ebook, but he, Jimmy didn't have, he did not have a traditional publisher. And if you're a writer, you can self publish every single book that you want to create. You just got to get it out of your head. But you can self publish your book and build a speaking and teaching and coaching brand just from your laptop. That's what Jimmy's done. You don't need to wait for a million dollar publishing deal. You don't need for someone to tell you it's your time. And as a Seth Godin book just, it just came out, said it's always your time. But all you need to have is the will to write, the guts to put yourself out there, and the ability to upload a book to Amazon. 
and by the way, you can do that last part, uploading to Amazon from almost any library for free in the world. Let me give you a couple examples of two more wildly successful writers who self-published their books and literally sold them out of the trunks of their car. The first one, and I've talked about him a couple times on the blog, if you've ever met me in person and asked about some of my fiction uh, book favorites uh, or favorite authors, I would tell you this guy right here, Vince Flynn. Not only was he dyslexic, and he went to the Marine Corps and had to had to argue with people who thought he was dumb because he couldn't read the way normal people might read. But he, every single one of his books has, has hit number one on the New York Times bestselling list. And do you know how he sold his first book? He printed them up, went to a, a local publisher, paid for it on his own, and sold them out of the trunk of his car. And his first book, I think it was called Term Limits. Somebody out there checked me on that and, and let me know. But he sold that book out of the trunk of his car. Dave Ramsey did the exact same thing. I think it was Total Money Makeover, maybe. One of his very first books, he sold that self-published out of the trunk of his car. Now, just as a side note, I know just from doing some research six years ago or so, for about five or $600, you could get... Uh, a printing company to print up maybe 10 to 20 hard ca- uh, paperback books and you could sell them. You know, just they were actual books you could hand somebody across the kitchen table out of your trunk. They weren't necessarily, they weren't digital at all, but they would print that for five or $600. Or you can go the ebook route. But my point is, no one's going to come and tell you it's your time. You just, you just have to stand up and say, hey, I'm worth, worth paying attention to. I'm, my message is worth hearing, and here it is. The next example is a couple of photographers. Has, have you ever wanted to start a photography business? You think it was uh, you know, hard to start up? How, you, you have to get clients. Who am I going to take pictures of? How, may, how am I going to travel the world, whatever? Well, I'm going to tell you the story, or the, just a brief summary of the story of David and Allie, who started DeathToTheStockPhoto.com, David Sherry and Allie Lehman. If you've been listening to the show, you might have heard them on the show a few weeks ago. They were actually episode number, oh, let's see, they were, they were episode number 61, EmpoweredPodcast.com slash 61. They worked for free for six months before they started charging for their images, and when they did charge on launch day, they made, I think it was like $2,500, $3,000. They built up a community. They learned who their target customers were, who was really enjoying their images. And they built a brand focused on adding to adding value to a community. And you'll hear a little bit more uh, about that in that podcast. But I interviewed them on on my show because I wanted to know how you can build a successful business by giving things away for free. So when you're talking about an excuse like, I don't have any customers, I don't have any clients, neither did they. And they didn't for six months, but they focused on adding value and creating amazing images. I want to talk to you about some kids. Now, that's pretty generic, but on Facebook, someone had shared this link. And I watched the video, and if you want to write or record music, if you're a musician like Paul, we I mentioned just a, a minute ago, you've got to check out the video of these kids. They did a cover of a 90s rock band called Fuel or Tool or one of those. They were pretty popular back in the 90s. So if you're in your late 20s to, I don't know, mid-30s, you might really um, recognize the song that they did. But... They recorded it and put it on the internet. Over 7 million people have viewed that video. Whether it's it's their age, their their extreme level of talent, whatever it is, it's over 7 million people. I think it was like 7.5 million people have viewed that video. And several tens of thousands have given it the old thumbs up saying that they really loved it. Now, could those kids leverage that video into getting into Juilliard or another music school? Maybe, maybe not, but 
they they created this this amazing video again they had some professionals doing the video but you know with some gopros and the equipment that i i mentioned as a resource uh earlier you you can do the exact same thing make sure you get good microphones and good lighting but yeah other than that um it just you can get somebody and and do the exact same thing that they've done let me tell you about a teacher are you interested in being a teacher? Do you have a passion for history or science or biology? And you think, well, maybe this does this whole online thing and then this global reach and this ability to reach tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands or seven million people uh, it is not for me. Let me tell you the story of Leslie Samuel. Leslie uploads instructional videos to his YouTube channel, which has over 70,000 subscribers. I first heard Leslie's story, I believe it was on Pat Flynn's podcast on uh, Smart Passive Income. And he wasn't even, uh, Leslie, Pat, not Pat, Leslie wasn't even born in the United States. He was from St. Martin, I believe. So he he immigrated to the United States. He had a passion for teaching and for biology and created his biology channel. Yeah, biology. I mean, that's kind of odd. A biology channel on YouTube. He has over 60,000 people who view his videos every single month. And Leslie removed or ignored the excuses and shared science to the tune of over 7 million views on all of his videos combined. And that is an incredible, incredible, insane and incredible story. And every week, every time I get out of my comfort zone, because you know by now that that I'm I'm sh- somewhat shy and fairly introverted, but every time I get out of my comfort zone and talk to somebody, I meet someone who has an incredible idea that they could change the world with or change the life of one person with if 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 they would just share it. And you, as you're listening to this on your commute, on the treadmill, in your office, you can change the world too. I absolutely believe that. It's I, I have no reason to lie to you or, or pump you up or, or give you any sort of, of fluff, but you can change the world too. Paul Cardall did it, and he was born with a congenital, uh, congenital heart disease. He was born with literally one half of a heart. Jimmy Burgess did it, and he didn't have a pump, publishing company backing him. He's from Florida, and he sounds like a redneck. I love that dude. He's a good friend of mine, uh, but that didn't stop him. David Sherry and Allie Lehman of Death to the Stock Photo did it, and they started completely from scratch. These kids didn't look at, at, at the world and say, you know, we're, I don't know, 9 to 15 years old. Nobody's going to pay attention to us, or this isn't a perfect cover. Or even, heck, this, this band that, of the, that we're doing the cover for hasn't even been on the radio in 20 years. They did it anyway. And that's really the difference between people who make it, and the people who don't. The only difference is that they take action. The people who achieve their goals take action. The people who make it and see their dreams become a reality are the ones who ignore the excuses and do it anyway. I have no more excuses for not building the business that I want to have, reaching the readers or the podcast listeners that I want to reach, or having the number of coaching clients that I want to have. I have no more excuses for that, and neither do you. With that, I'll leave you. I hope you have a fantastic week. I want to know what you are working on. I want to hear from you. Shoot me a note. Send me an email to ellery at elleriewells.com. You can always subscribe to every single episode if you go to empoweredpodcast.com. Those are really the only things that you need to know. Actually, just empoweredpodcast.com. That's the only link that you need. Everything will be there. I've got tons of resources once you go to that URL, how to grow your blog, how to start your podcast, how to make your first dollar online, how to you know get more, more traction with your blog, how to get more readers all kinds of resources I share from what I have learned over the last three years, and I want to share it with you. Go to empoweredpodcast.com. Thank you for listening. It's been an honor spending this time with you today. This is another episode, number 67 of the Empowered Podcast. I'm your host, Ellery Wells. 
We will see you next week, and stay tuned for the series where we start talking about live events. I, I just part of it's been me uh, excuses and and falling behind on some scheduling, and part of it is I really want to do a good job, and it'll be a five or six episode series to really give you what you need to know to to knock it out of the park with some live events. So part excuse and part wanting to do a good job, and uh, that's that's pretty much it. I hope you're having a wonderful day. We'll talk to you soon.